Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm finally getting to that video on natural ways to care for menopause or postmenopausal symptoms. Just basically what it boils down to is how how well you take care of yourself and your diet. So we'll be covering a bunch of that stuff today. So first, let me start off by listing some of the nutrients that are really especially important. I mean, they're all important, but especially necessary during this time. And that would be your vitamins D, C, K, and E. And then your minerals like calcium and magnesium in particular. But most of your other minerals are also going to be necessary, but those two are at the top of the list. So with that in mind, let's start off by talking about the eggshells and how I've used them for myself and taking them as a daily supplement. Now, when I take them, I actually, you know, just to save on gel caps because, you know, I'm being cheap, I do like to just add about a teaspoon to a tablespoon in a little glass of water and just drink it down. Sometimes I'm using the leftover herbal tea from the night before to take it with. However, you can also take it in supplement form like I have right here if that's easier for you. Now, I have a couple of different videos about eggshells and how they've helped me as well as I just did one that was an FAQ about how to wash and, you know, prepare the eggshells for using. So I do grind them up. I use my blender, but you can also use a coffee grinder. And anyway, I'll link to those two videos down below where I talk about using them and then how I prepare the eggshells. But eggshells, especially if they're either coming from your own chickens or eggs that you've bought that were in the most organic, free range kind of chickens that you are able to get a hold of, are the most frugal way to go when you're looking at adding calcium and magnesium to your diet. And I do believe it's going to be far healthier than purchasing those supplements and taking them individually, which should never be done anyway. You should not be taking just high doses of calcium by itself. It's really important that you have these two together. It is important to also have them with other things like vitamin D, vitamin K2, and potassium. But these are often things all found together. I believe potassium is another one of the minerals that you will find in your eggshells. This is why I really love using eggshells because they're free for me because we have our own chickens. But you could still consider them free if you have to buy your own eggs and you're used to just tossing the eggshells. Well, don't toss those eggshells. They have many other uses besides even taking as a supplement. Now, as far as some of these other vitamins, I'm only going to list a few of the foods that these things are high in, but I do recommend you do your own research at, at looking up each individual mineral or vitamin and find out what foods are high in these things. And the, the easiest way to do it is simply type into your browser foods high in or foods rich in vitamin D3, vitamin K2, magnesium, calcium, and so on. And you'll be able to kind of piece together some things. And what you'll often find out is the ones that need to be taken together anyway are usually found together naturally in those things. Just like in that video I mentioned that where I talk about the benefits of eggshells, I do also bring up some vegan ideas for people who are looking to find foods that are high in both calcium and magnesium, whether it be individually or together. But Things like vitamin K2 and vitamin D3, these are things that are mostly found in animal products. Though yes, you can get like K2, you can get in like fermented bean curd, which does not have to be soy, by the way. You can do a fermented black bean curd. It's not quite as high in vitamin K2 as the fermented soybean curd, but which is called natto, I believe, N-A-T-T-O. And, but you can do a black bean, which I would recommend over the soy because my personal opinion, this is just my personal opinion now. So, you know, I do have a video on about the great soy debate, but especially for women our age, I think that soy is something that should be avoided. That's again, that's what, that's just what I choose to do based on my own research. But again, you got to find out what's best for you. I do still believe when it comes to soy, if 
you're going to ingest it. The best way to do that is in a fermented form. So anyway, you can check out that video and I'll try to remember to link it down below. Some other things that K2 are, that you can find like K2 and vitamin D3 together would be like butter. I mean, who doesn't love butter? Unless you're vegan, of course, but I mean, if you're not vegan, come on. Butter is awesome and it has, it is high in so many great vitamins and minerals that I just, I believe absolutely in butter, especially when it's coming from the most organic, naturally raised livestock and all that. I mean, the healthiest you can get, the better. Sometimes when you look some of these things up, foods that are rich in, they might give you a list like uh, fortified orange juice or fortified milk or fortified cereal. Well, I don't recommend going that route because one thing you have to realize, unless it says otherwise, things that have been fortified with vitamins and minerals usually are in the form of some kind of synthetic vitamin mineral. So some man-made vitamin mineral replacement and i say go as natural as you can so getting it naturally from foods is going to be the absolute best way but as a lot of us know with we're looking at you know soils that that a lot of things are grown in are not as mineral rich as they once used to be and D3, especially if you're, it can be one of the harder ones to get enough of, especially if you're indoors a lot, or you live in a place like we do where we just do not get a lot of sun. And I'm sure those in the UK can totally relate to us here in Forks, Washington. A few other things that you'll find vitamin K2 in would be cheeses like Gouda and cream cheese. It's also pretty high in certain poultry livers. So if you like liver, that might be the way to go. And then as as far as vitamin D3, some other things that are very rich in that are going to be a lot of your fatty fish like mackerel, tuna, and so on. And if you are a vegan, vitamin D2, though not as potent as vitamin D3, can be a good replacement for vitamin D3. And that's something you can get from plant-based foods. You can buy it in a supplement form. We do actually take, not all year round, but you, during the darkest months of the year, we do try to take vitamin D3 as a supplement daily just because we have so much limited sun, but we don't take it in the summer. So if you're like us and you're trying to find a way to get more of that in there you may need to supplement at least with that and i apologize i didn't look into what foods i i can't remember i did see a couple that are high in vitamin d2 that are plant-based but again you can do the same thing just add the words foods plant-based foods rich in vitamin d2 and you should be able to find what you're looking for in that way if you're trying to get your vitamins and minerals in a whole food form like that and one thing I will say is generally speaking, and this is no slam on any kind of special diets, if you are, are on a special diet, such as you're being carb free, for example, or you know, you're vegan, it can be a little more difficult getting your, all the nutrients that you need unless you're supplementing. So you really need to seriously look into that. I know that some people that are doing like the carb free thing are losing a lot of hair because they're missing out on certain nutrients that are found in foods that are high in carbohydrates. If you're eliminating whole food groups, that just tends to be the thing. I mean, my belief has always been, even though I've tried being vegan, I've tried being vegetarian, I've tried to, I, I've done kind of my own version of a low carb, not based on any specific diet, just my own, always just experimenting to see how it makes me feel. And I find I always feel the best when I eat from all the different food groups and don't eliminate a whole group other than junk food. I mean, obviously, if you count that as, as a food group, it's just not food, but... <laughs> But you know, I'm talking dairy, meat, fruits, vegetables, and grain, and fats. I, I personally think, generally speaking, that most of us need all that, but I do understand that people have to be on certain elimination diets for health reasons, so there's no judgment me meant there. I'm just stating that for those who are kind of thinking about doing that just for the sake of weight loss. I will be doing a separate video 
on diets and at least what works best for me. That again does not mean it's gonna be the best for everyone, it's just me personally. But you do have to kind of experiment. And here's the thing, especially being a woman, is if you haven't noticed already by the time you're at this age or you're going through menopause or you're at, in the postmenopausal phase that our bodies are always changing, always changing. It seems like men can go through their whole life and never have to worry about changing the way they eat or the way they do anything. But us women, we're always changing. You know, from the time we first start our cycle and then we have our first baby. And even between that and then starting to go through menopause, our bodies go through so many different changes that we're constantly having to readjust the way we do things, how we eat, what we can have a little more or less of. And that's just because of the changing needs of our bodies. As our hormone levels go down, there are other things that we can do to help that out. And I'm not talking about going on some kind of fake hormone replacement therapy. I'm absolutely against that. Um, Again, I don't want to be judgmental for someone who may need to seriously be on that, but I think for most people that should be avoided at all costs. Because again, you're talking about something that's been synthesized, it's not natural, and also the fact that during the course of our lives, we are meant to only be exposed to natural estrogen for a period of time. That's why when we're young, where you know when we're little kids before we have our first menstrual cycle we're not having to deal with all that and that's why also there comes a point in our life when all that stops and i think if we start trying to throw a bunch of more hormones even in the form of estrogen mimickers that are natural like soy i believe this is one of the contributing factors to breast cancer in a lot of women it's not all of it but I believe it's just one of them and that's why I think just like with my chickens I know this might sound off topic but to me it's not you know our chickens are meant to lay eggs for a certain part of the year and not through the darkest time of the year and some people will put artificial light in their chickens coop to keep them laying eggs all year round but I believe for chickens to be fully healthy they need to have that rest time. I think God gave them that for a reason. So I don't provide artificial light during the winter time. I just store up the extra eggs when they're laying them. Just like trying to find ways to replace the estrogen your body is no longer producing. Well, it's meant to no longer produce that. So let's just find ways of dealing with the symptoms naturally. Again, soy is one of those things and so is flaxseed that's considered a good way to replace estrogen and i think flaxseed can be a good choice but personally do not think you should be doing that with soy because um, flaxseed does have many other benefits you know its whole gelatinous nature that it takes on anything that that can become gelatinous like flaxseed and chia seed or something that's also very good at helping pull the toxins out of the system and a lot of your seeds like flax and poppy and chia are very high in those same kind of minerals that your body really needs right now. So getting more of that in your diet, I think is gonna be good. Even with a flax seed, I think you're gonna be relatively safe. So there are also some other herbs that can help. Now I haven't tried all of these, but I will go ahead and list some of this these off. And that would be like your wild yam. Actually, I do have some wild yam supplements I bought years ago, but um, that was when I was just starting to go through the beginning phases of menopause. And I don't remember if they did me any good. And I still have them and I haven't, I haven't used them. But that is one a lot of people swear by black cohosh. And then a couple that I do use off and on are the ashwagandha and the maca root, which I had started getting into using those for the sake of helping our thyroid. Well, come to find out those are also excellent choices for helping you deal with menopausal symptoms. Now, that can be in the form of my Jet Fueled Latte. I have a recipe on this. Now, I'm gonna to be totally honest because somebody asked me recently, um, 
how come you're stocking up on coffee beans if you don't drink coffee? Well, I do drink coffee, but when I first started my channel was when I was going through that period that I was quitting coffee for a time for the most part. I would still have a little bit here and there, but mostly was just having my jet fueled latte in the morning. And so it's my own blend that I made in order to be able to take the ashwagandha and the maca root along with some other spices in the morning as a coffee replacement so I could get these to help with my thyroid. But recently learned they're also very good for menopause. Now, maca root has a better flavor than ashwagandha, but uh, they, they're just not the best flavors. So that is also something you can do is if you can't handle taking it like I've done, you can also make your own supplements like this. And I would say take two or three of them a day if you're gonna make it in this size. So these are double zero size capsules. They're the ones I always use. And I would say at least two or three of each of those per day, but check out my recipe on the Jet Fuel Latte. Again, don't forget to adjust the spices to suit you. A lot of people went ahead and put in all the cayenne pepper that I use and they couldn't handle the heat. So if you don't like cayenne pepper, don't add it. There's no need for that. The main focus on that was the ashwagandha and the maca root and the, the cacao powder and the spices were to help add to kind of cover up the bitter flavor of the ashwagandha. Anyway, so yeah, you can tailor that to suit you. That's, you know, you can mix it with milk, you can mix it with nut milk, however you want to do that. So I already mentioned how your D vitamins, you know, your D3 is found in a lot of your fish and just fish is a good healthy food anyway. So any way you can get more fish, sardines too, you know, if you like sardines, you maybe stock up on some of those. It's a lot of your, those same fatty fishes are also high in omega-3s and which is going to very be very helpful and then a few other things would be your cruciferous vegetables now if you are trying to heal your thyroid and you have hypothyroidism like me and patrick did i suggest staying away from eating raw cruciferous vegetables and this even means in the form of kimchi fermented in other words I recommend that you cook them first. Now we're at a point where I don't, I'm not afraid of eating these things raw. But again, if you're, if you've got a low functioning thyroid, it's best to stay away from raw cruciferous vegetables. Think of steaming them lightly first to break down those goitrogens so that it's not going to make your thyroid even more sluggish than it already is. So you got to give your thyroid, if you're trying to heal it, get it, give it time to heal and stay away from these things raw for a time at least. And then don't forget your healthy fats, such as coconut oil and avocado oil, or even just avocado as a fruit, because that's mostly fat, that whole fruit. And it's avocados are so good for you and getting healthy fats are so important. And the great thing is you can get healthy fats from both sides. If you're a vegan, then yes, you can focus on the coconut oil and the avocados and the nuts and the seeds. And if you're not a vegan, then you can get some good healthy fats from your animals. You know, again, coming back to the butter and, and lard that hasn't been hydrogenated. And again, of course, when we're talking about animal fat, we're talking about animals that have not been injected with hormones and steroids and antibiotics and all this stuff animals that have been raised healthy and natural. And that's what you want to look at when you're talking any of your animal products, whether it be dairy or the meat itself or the fats. And then a couple more other things is just remembering to stay as active as you can. Now, I personally do not think people should have to run out and pay for gym memberships, especially now. I mean, I don't even know if gyms are even open, but really it's kind of pointless because if you're a DIYer anyway, and you're trying to learn and do a lot of things for yourself, you should be naturally pretty active anyway. And I think that if we're doing these natural things that we would normally do anyway, such as, you know, sewing on a treadle machine or at working out in the garden or washing dishes by hand and folding laundry, and we're doing that kind of stuff all day, I think that's the natural, normal kind of activity we should be having. Now, there's nothing wrong with throwing in some extra exercises in there, but that can easily be done at home. You don't have to get a gym membership. So if it's that time of the year, like right now, the time I'm shooting this video, well, there's not much going on in the garden. So obviously I'm not getting out there and, and work in the garden, but 
I, you know, so I might try to find ways to throw more exercise in there. Thankfully, a lot of my sewing, I have a treadle machine, so I'm constantly able to work my legs. I'm washing dishes, I'm standing up, I'm folding clothes, I'm moving around. And hanging clothes up, not just throwing them in the dryer, but hanging them up, taking them down. These are natural movements that are not hard to do, but they're keeping you moving. So the least sedentary you can be, the better off you're gonna be. You don't have to push yourself hard with exercise, just keep moving. Let's say you're kind of going through a phase where you're, maybe you're even just taking a day off because you're just exhausted, or maybe you've come down with a bug and you need to rest. Well. And then you start thinking, man, and this is, used to be something I struggled with all the time was if I was in a place where I couldn't exercise every day, because I used to do like a thousand jumping jacks a day and I don't remember how many sit-ups. And if I was in a place where I couldn't do that, I'd just feel like, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, first of all, your body does need a break. <laughs> I find I do best I'm, I'm just a lot, lot higher functioning if I can take a day off. Imagine that, right? And I take a day off, as hard as it is for me to do sometimes, it, not even do YouTube stuff, just take a day and just relax. And I find the next day I'm far more energetic. I've got a more positive outlook on the things I gotta do and, and I can just bam, bam, bam. The very next day I can get so much more stuff done than I did the day before I took that day off. So remember to be kind to yourself in that way as well. But what I was gonna say, and this is also gonna to apply to people that maybe they can't do a lot of standing or moving around. There's this little saying that's talking mostly about exercise and burning calories, but apply it to yourself in the way it fits. That sitting is better than lying down, standing is better than sitting, walking is better than standing, running is better than walking. Now again, that's a in regards to burning calories. Now, I don't think running is the best, even though I used to do it. I just don't think it's the best exercise for everyone, especially ladies our age. It can be pretty hard on your joints. Walking is gonna be better, so running's only better at burning calories at a faster rate, but you're gonna be a lot better just doing more natural movement. So I said all that to say is, Maybe you can't do a lot of walking or standing for long periods of time, but you can sit. And sitting is better than lying down. So if you're sitting, then find ways to make yourself active while you're sitting. Just like when I'm sitting at the treadle machine, obviously I'm staying active because my legs are constantly pumping. My arms are constantly moving because I'm throwing, you know, I'm putting a spin on that wheel and guiding the fabric through there. Or maybe I'm sitting and I'm crocheting. As long as you're doing some kind of natural movement, I think that's gonna be helpful. And obviously the older we get, you know, we have to watch some of our certain activity levels, but we should always keep moving. My neighbor across the street is an elderly lady and you wouldn't know, you wouldn't guess that she's in her late 70s by looking at her because she's always active, always moving. No, she doesn't jog. She doesn't do a thousand jumping jacks every day. She just gets out there and works in her garden. Sometimes she'll go for little walks. In fact, she was out there yesterday because we got our one and only snow of the year. And you know, because if we ever get snow, it's usually only in January or February and it lasts for a day to two days and then it's gone. Well, she was out there building a snowman in her front yard. And I was like, good for her. Not only is she getting outside, getting fresh air, She's doing something physical and she's bringing some kind of joy to the neighborhood and to herself. And that, that's something else you've got to focus on. Now, one of the things I wanted to share before I close this video out is that I remember how much I was fearing going through menopause because you hear all these horror stories. You hear the horror stories about the hot flashes and the night sweats. Yes, I do have to deal with those off and on, but I believe that they're pretty minimal, especially since adding the eggshells that I don't have as many. And when I do have them, they're far, they're very short. They're like much shorter than they used to be. And as far as any other symptoms, I mean, I was afraid of just, I'm not saying I don't have a temper. I have always had a temper and I can still blow up from time to time. <laughs> and I might still rip and tear into some certain rude commenters, but that's just 
the way I am, but when I look at my whole life, I find myself far more even-tempered all the way around now at this stage of my life than I did when I was a teenager going through puberty and when I was pregnant with my kids. Yes, because I'm a woman, I am naturally going to be more emotional than men, but I feel like I, I just a lot more even tempered no need for antidepressants or any kind of drugs and I, what i believe a lot of this comes down to is the changes i made through the past i you know 10 20 years i've always been a fairly healthy person believed in exercise and eating right but as a lot of you know there's things that we thought we were eating we thought were it was good for us you know we were trusting certain companies to give us good healthy stuff and come to find out that stuff wasn't good for us and you know and then getting away from the the big pharma drugs like the thyroid medication i believe that by doing that getting ourselves in a more healthy position more natural has made going through menopause a lot easier now that's always going to be different for each woman every woman is different and like some women don't even ever deal with hot flashes but maybe they have more issues with other things but really i believe this whole big huge long menopause symptom list is something that i think there's parts of it that will always be normal but i think there's a lot that's been added to the list over the past 10 20 years that is not normal and i don't think that's the way menopause is supposed to be i think when we're living a good natural healthy lifestyle menopause should virtually be a breeze so you know if we're just living the way we're supposed to live eating right, being active and healthy and, and constantly just doing stuff for ourselves. That's also not only going to save us money and be more frugal, but also brings a certain amount of joy through accomplishment. I think these are the things because they're such a natural way to be that make going through these different times in our lives so much easier rather than running to the doctor and getting on drugs which is only going to cause more problems than it solves okay well i hope you found this video helpful and don't forget to check out some of the other videos i'll be putting down below including the one i'll put down there that's about three years old now that patrick and i did together on how we took ourselves off the thyroid medication and anything else i can think of that might be helpful i'll go ahead and put that down below as well all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless Thank you.